You're gonna put all this time into study for the PE exam. Are you actually gonna use your license day to day in your job as an engineer? Well, in this week's Pass the PE Exam video, I'm thrilled to have with me Jared Carlson. Jared is the Director of Engineering at Henderson Engineers, and he's a licensed professional engineer, and he does use his license all the time. In this episode, Jared's gonna talk about how he uses it, how important it is, and how it differentiates you as an engineer. This week's video is brought to you by our sponsor, PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. All right, now I'd like to welcome our guest onto the show today. Jared Carlson is the Director of Engineering at Henderson Engineers. Jared, welcome to Pass the PE Exam. Thanks, Anthony. It's great to be here. So, Jared, just to kick it off, give our listeners a little idea about your career kind of trajectory and career path to date. Yeah, well, I've always been interested in engineering. Um, so I, I went to school for it. I graduated from Uni University of Nebraska-Lincoln with a degree in mechanical engineering. And right out of school, I went to work for a company called Henderson Engineers, and I've been with them ever since. So it's taken me on a wild ride through lots of different projects and designs and engineering uh, projects. And here I am today, uh, now in this role, I get the, the pleasure of serving as the director of engineering for Henderson Engineers. No, that's awesome. And, you know, obviously you have your PE license, which is, mm -hmm. you know, why we're talking with you today, of course. Um, can you talk a little bit about you know, the path to the PE license for you? Like what made you aware of it? What yeah. made you want to get your license? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was at school in Nebraska, um, they drilled it into us pretty early and, and often that it was very important to not only go for your professional engineering license eventually, but primarily just to start with getting your fundamentals of engineering exam pass or a test passed early on. So your FE exam. And so I did that right out of, of school. I did it my senior year of, of college. Um, and so I knew that that was gonna set me up, up for success in the future. So when I started working at Henderson, Henderson Engineers is a consulting engineering firm. And so what they do is they bring buildings to life. So they, they design the guts of the building. So anything from mechanical to electrical to plumbing systems. And in order for any of those buildings to be built, you have to have those drawings, those deliverables signed and sealed by a registered professional engineer. So having a professional engineer on staff uh, for that company is vital to the business success of Henderson Engineers. So therefore, when I started with Henderson, it was drilled into me pretty early and often as well that to get uh, further in your career, to further in the, the industry of consulting engineering, going for your professional engineering license was also vitally important. So for me, uh, you know, day one, I knew that that was gonna be my career path. That was going to be incentive for me to, to go after that because I wanted to contribute to the success of the business, the success of the industry as well. And so four years in, right when I was qualified to take the exam, uh, I went for it and got it and I've been using it ever since. That's awesome. And, and that's one of the reasons that we really wanted to talk to Jared today here on Pass the PE Exam, because I think a lot of times what happens in engineering is engineers are making that decision, like, should I get my license or not? And they're trying to make the decision based on, is it really going to help me? Like, am I going to use it every day? You know, it's kind of like, mm -hmm. I joke around, like my my 13 year old son is like, dad, I'm, I'm, I take math every day, but this stuff is like boring. I don't think I'm ever going to use this in real life. And so that's one of the reasons that we wanted to talk to you, Jared, is like, and mm -hmm. you did just mention a little bit about the work that you do at Henderson, but since you've gotten that license, have you really seen on a day-to-day -day basis, like how applicable it's been for you in your job? Yeah, absolutely. So there's nothing like, once you get your first license as a professional engineer, and then you have to 
apply your stamp to those drawings and then sign over top of it. Um, there's nothing like the feeling, the, the dread that comes over like, oh my goodness, uh, I'm actually going to sign and seal this drawing. Because let's take a step back for a moment and think about what signing and sealing and applying your license really means. So when you become a professional engineer, you basically have to take the creed uh, set by the National Standard of Professional Engineering or National Society of Professional Engineers, which states that you're going to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public. You basically become a doctor for buildings. And so you're taking a very high creed, high calling. And so when you have to sign and seal uh, a drawing and deliverable that's going to be built in the field, that's something that someday you can walk into you know, show your friends and family, say, hey, I had a hand in, in designing this, this project. That's a big deal because that means you're, you're putting your professional uh, license on the line there to say, I guarantee that this is going to protect the health, welfare, and safety of the public. So um, for me, that's, it's a high calling, it's a high responsibility, but it's really uh, important to serve our country, serve our industry in that way. And uh, yeah, so being able to apply it you know, even just four years in right away to, to say, okay, you know, this is it. I get to, I get to uh, sign and seal my name to it. But what's beautiful about that too is that you get to work with a community of other engineers who are right there with you. You can ask technical questions to make sure that whatever we're designing is code compliant, not only to the building codes, but also the energy codes today, which, uh, you know, is taking on a, a greater and greater importance in our society. So um, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a fun experience, let me tell you. The first time you get that thrill, and then from then on, it becomes much more of, a, of an authority, a confidence booster to say, yeah, I can do hard things. I know how to do this. Um, I know how to look out for the health, welfare, and safety of the public. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I, I always like to make an analogy, and I know it's a little silly, but use the quote from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. Absolutely. Because I think it's so applicable to getting your engineering license because yes, it's a stamp or a seal and that's great. It sits on your desk. It's a big accomplishment, but to Jared's point, when there's a set of building plans or in my case, site plans as a civil engineer, and you have to go ahead and put your seal on them. I mean, you're basically attesting to that. You're putting mm -hmm. your career yourself on the line mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. And you're doing that based on the knowledge that you've built up from schooling, mm -hmm. from going through the uh, exam process. But at the same time, with that risk and with that liability, also comes opportunity. And, yes. Right. Absolutely. And it's like exactly what you said, Jared. It's your opportunity to impact the community in a positive way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what makes engineering very exciting. And if you're out there and you're contemplating on whether or not I should get my PE license, whether or not it's going to help me on a day to day basis, you know, Jared's example, I believe, is a good one how he's using it on a very regular basis. He's using it on exciting projects. Mm -hmm. And his point about the health and safety of the public is really what's paramount for us as licensed engineers yes. because we hold the health of um, health and safety of the public really in our hands in a way because you know yes. we have to make sure that whatever we're designing is safe for them whether it's a roadway whether it's a bridge whether it's a building whether it's a dam mm -hmm. whatever the case may be mm -hmm. and so there's a lot that comes along with it and it is a prestigious profession and getting that license if you're if you have the capabilities of getting it you're maybe watching this because you took the FE or maybe you're still thinking about it. Definitely, definitely do it. And one last thing I just want to touch base on with Jared, because it is an opportunity, is if you get your license, you're a, you're in a select group of people, Jared, right, from a number mm -hmm. standpoint. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, go with me on this little journey here using some numbers. <laughs> um, I did some uh, just snooping and did some reporting data runs and exports from the Kansas uh uh, state of Kansas website for the registered professional engineer. So state of Kansas, I, I live in Kansas. That's where I'm, my first license uh, was given. I'm now licensed in over 20 states across the country. Um, and so I just wanted, I was curious, you know, I was just curious, curiosity got the best of me. So I did some data reports on the state of Kansas. And um, since 1980, uh, or since basically they started tracking the registrations of professional engineers, there have been just over 31,000 uh, professional engineering licenses given in the state of Kansas. So since 1980. Now today, how many of those are active is just over 7,000. 
So let's let's think about that for a moment. So 7,000 individuals are responsible for signing and sealing every single building, every single piece of infrastructure that is built within the state of Kansas. Okay. So let's extrapolate that out a little bit more now. So, uh, you know, we live in the United States, so across the country here. Um, I would su suspect there's probably about only 1 million uh, registered, licensed professional engineers in the country. And so, and, and the, of those 1 million, you know, you could have uh, multiple registrations in multiple states. So, like I said, I'm, I, my first license was in Kansas. I'm now licensed in over 20 states. So, um, of that 7,000 ish that were that are active in Kansas, not everyone lives in Kansas. There's lots of cross state licensure. So that pool of 1 million total engineers, that's all disciplines. That's chemical, structural, mechanical, electrical, uh, computer engineers, all of that. So, and all and of that, you know, if I'm just a mechanical engineer, that's a pretty small pool. That that shrinks pretty quickly. So our industry. Is it plays a very critical role in progressing the infrastructure, the the building uh, of our country, and I think that's really cool. That that gets mm. me really excited to be a part of an elite group, and um, that gives me a, a confidence boost to know that I'm a part of that group, as well as a sense of of authority to say that and responsibility that comes with that to say I have the opportunity to shape where this this whole country is going and how the our buildings are built and the safety and the, the fun that is impacted by that. So, you know, I've signed everything from simple retail projects to restaurants to, you know, large stadium, sports stadium venue projects. Uh, and so it's just cool to see how the work of our hands get uh, built and executed in our, in our country. Yeah. And I think it's an important point from a career advancement perspective too, because mm -hmm. we always like to talk about, you know, at EMI, when you're developing your career as an engineer, you want to differentiate yourself. Yep. And the engineering license is really one of those biggest differentiating factors because Absolutely. of the reasons that Jared just said, because you're, you know, you're limiting now the pool of the number of people that um, kind of are in that same stature or status as mm -hmm. you. And, and that's from a career standpoint, when companies are looking to hire or, you know, looking to advance someone within a company, I mean, I, I was just dealing with a company we're doing some project management training for, and I interviewed one of their PMs and I told the CEO, I said, man, this PM, he's great. I could see him really going far in your company. And his response to me was like, I would love for that to happen, but he's not licensed. Mm -hmm. Right. And so again, that yep. comes out like he's not licensed. So it can be really a barrier actually, if you don't have it. So, so I would say to you, even if you don't know a hundred percent, if you're going to use it in your specific line of business, let's just say, Get it now while you can, you know, while you're younger, yes. while you've got the experience, while there's a lot of topics that's fresh right. in your mind. Because that's right. <laughs> yeah, because you know, you never know where your career is ultimately going to take you. And one last thing that I'll say is that, you know, we talked about, you know, liability and you know, responsibility and all that stuff today. If you do get your license, you absolutely hundred percent should, you know, think about and you have to talk with your employer about the liability of signing and sealing mm -hmm. plans, right? I don't want you to think that we're talking about it here. So you get your license and you start stamping stuff, <laughs> right? There's a process that you should go through. It's a very important process. You'll need to have liability insurance. And obviously this goes beyond the, the PE exam and such, but it is another important step of the process. Like we said, there's a lot of, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with your license. Yes. So if you do get your license, I recommend that you sit down with your employer and say, I've got my license. I'm more than willing to sign and seal drawings if you are, but I just mm -hmm. want to talk about the process to make sure that I'm covered from a liability perspective, the company's covered. Um, yes. You really want to cover those bases because, you know, that is part of the process, but again, you can get the right liability insurance to cover you, but I just want to mention that that's an important part of this process. Absolutely. Thank you for mentioning, mentioning that, Anthony. Um, so just for my case, for my scenario here at Henderson, we have a corporate liability policy uh, for insurance that does cover every individual that works for Henderson who applies their um, uh, seal and signature to drawings. If you were going on your own to start your own business, let's say, you would have to do that for yourself. You'd have to uh, buy that uh, liability insurance uh, on the open market for that. So that's a great point, Anthony. You know, With great power comes great responsibility, right? And that responsibility, you should cover yourself uh, on the financial side, just in the event something goes wrong. Hopefully that never happens, right? 
Um, but we live in uh, in an in industry where and we live just live in an imperfect world where things happen. You know, let's yeah. just say that. So, for sure, for sure. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. Well, Jared Carlson, Director of Engineering, Henderson Engineers, I really want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to talk with our audience here. You've given us some great input. Thank you so much for coming on past the PE exam. Yeah, you betcha. Thank you, Anthony, for having me. Appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Jared. He's so right in that getting your engineering license puts you in rare company and differentiates you. So I hope that you'll buckle up do what you have to do and get that engineering license. And please subscribe to our channel here because we're gonna help you do that every single week with our videos. And please leave comments and questions below this video and we'll answer them. Whether you need a specific problem answered or maybe you're having a challenge with one part of your studying or preparation, Pass the PE Exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE Exam.